Okay. So I have Jason's steering column here apart, or steering wheel apart, to repair the horn assembly, which was corroded, so all the connections are bad. So what I've done is I've scraped the base of the steering wheel, which is the ground circuit for the horn. This center piece here is the hot circuit for the horn. This completes the horn, uh, the circuit from the horn relay to ground. Now, this steering wheel from age cracks away, and you can see these splits where the screws that hold this plate. This plate is part of the grounding assembly. It is also the three notches that hold the steering wheel button in once we're ready to go. And this is the spring that keeps the button from honking the horn. So what I'm going to do is daub in with a piece of anything you have and thread locker. And I'm going to daub thread locker into these holes that because the holes have expanded from this material the steering wheel is made of, this thread locker will hold the screws once I get them in. Uh, this is not a high torque venture here. These are not wheel lug nuts. All they need to do is just hold those screws. So now I'll put the cap on. Put your caps on everything and then get the things out of the way as you use them. Now I'll set this in here like this. And here are the three small sheet metal type screws that hold that plate. The, the only thing these three screws do is hold that plate that holds the horn button. So these three screws go in here with a little Phillips screwdriver and don't force them down or you'll strip what's left of the thread in the steering wheel. The only thing holding these in is those threads that are into this composition material steering wheel. So just turn them down until they're holding the plate. Like that. Okay, now let's see if I can get this all put together right and see if we can get the horn to honk. There's another spring here. Is that part? Yep. I'm not quite sure where that went because uh, this whole thing flew apart the minute I got the horn button loose. I'm not sure how this went. I have a hunch it went like this. Okay, I got it. I got the point now. Something like this. That's not honking the horn, so we're not making contact here. So let's go back and look at this once more. And let's set that aside for now. And let's see what happens here.
Okay, the circuit there is working. So now we gotta figure out how to get this all back together. This was meant to study the whole assembly. That doesn't make sense, does it? Okay, why don't you uh, pause the camera while I figure this out? Okay. So the next thing I'm doing is I'm going to use some of this thread lock to help glue down the horn button plate. What the larger spring that you saw in my hand does is create an electrical connection from the metal hub of the steering column, this spring creates an electrical connection from that point to this plate that holds the horn ring on. So now I'm going to screw that back on. And then, theoretically, the rest of this assembly goes over it. Uh, now, uh, so that makes sense. Okay. So now I'll put the three little screws back in. Remember people, these buses were meant to be operated by the original purchaser for 10 to 15 years. Nobody ever dreamed that 70 years later somebody would be expecting this stuff to work and here we are expecting it to work so 90 percent of what we do is making up for things that weren't anticipated and we become quite re, 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 quite, what's the word I'm looking for? Creative. Creative. Okay, now let's see if we've accomplished what I'm hoping for. Where's the needle nose? Yeah. There we are. Okay, so that circuit's complete. So now the next thing is this assembly. I really don't know what that part was. Where's our little disc? I don't think this is right. I didn't think it was. That disc has to be on the bottom side. That disc has to be down here somehow. And I got a hunch that rubber gasket doesn't belong in this picture. Yep. I wonder if somebody did that to disable it because it was honking all the time. Probably because the plate was loose and there was a screw jammed in there which was short circuiting the whole thing. There you go. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Now, while the camera is still rolling, uh, I want to show you what I did here 
uh, in this electrical panel. Remember I told you many times how these fuse holders corrode. And the pins on these fuse holders corrode. And you can't get them out. So I want to show you a little handy dandy. We have talked about soldering before. And I want to show you what happens. These heads are the studs, the bolts on the other side of the panel that the uh, wires are attached to. The point between this head and the base of the fuse holder corrodes away. And there's nothing you can do about it. If you try to hold this to remove the bolt, this breaks off of the bolt. And that's perfectly fine because this is what you get. You get a piece of copper that you can scrape clean. And here's a piece of steel that you can scrape clean. You can scrape these points right in here like I've done here, and then solder a bridge between this and this. And that then makes the electrical connection. It restores the electrical connection that was lost to the corrosion. Okay, that's it. I wanted to show you that while the camera was still running. The next thing that comes up in our world of electrical work is the emergency stop solenoid. Uh, the indications are that the coil is open. So when I take the back cover off of the coil, here's what I find. I find the wires twisted off the See this terminal here? And the wires are twisted off. What happens is, if you're not watching, and let's go back to what I've been saying, is you need to tighten all these nuts down. Remember when I said you remove the top nuts, the wire, whatever else, and get down to that bottom nut and tighten that nut down. Otherwise, what happens is when you go to tighten the upper nuts, or loosen them, you see paint on this, preventing that nut from spinning right off with your hand, right? So what happens is the whole bolt is turned, and back around on this side, you've twisted the wire going down into the coil. So sometimes I can solder a new piece of wire onto the stub, and solder that piece of wire onto this terminal. Or I can get this terminal loose and put the wire back under it. So this is a way to repair one of these solenoids instead of spending your vacation money buying a new one. So what happened, somebody had twisted that so much that they wrapped the wire from the coil. They wrapped that wire all around the inside of that until it just broke the wires right apart. So this piece of jumper that I've soldered onto the coil I'm going to cut and trim and attach it to this. I've already tightened this part back down again. So, so this nut now has this secured nicely. I'm forgetting I'm holding the camera. You guys and gals, excuse me for jerking the camera around. I keep forgetting I'm holding the camera and I start talking with my hands and forget what I'm doing. Uh, there's nobody here right now to hold the camera for me, so I'm gonna put this on pause and go get a stand and set this up, and then I'll show you how I'm gonna fix this whole thing. Okay, so now what I did was I cut that extra wire off and I trimmed it, so now I have enough wire that I can 
I'm going to get a piece of heat shrink tubing first. Uh, I'll get a little piece of this heat shrink tubing. I've been calling this spaghetti, by the way, because that's the word they used when they came out with this in the 50s. And so what I'm going to do is put this piece on. Then I'm going to carefully position this. I can't, I wish I had somebody here to work with me on this. I can get this wrapped around so I can solder it. I just have some way to hold all that together. So I can get some solder on it. If you're using a soldering gun or tip, be sure you wipe the part off that you want to solder so it's nice and clean. And at the same time you touch the tip to the wire, touch the solder, get the wire and the solder all hot at the same time. And let it cool. Don't test your work until it's cool. And then you can use something, poke at it. You see, made a good contact. All right, now be sure it's cool before you move this heat shrink. Otherwise, the heat shrink will shrink before you've covered the wire. So slide it on like that. Then you can use your soldering iron to shrink the shrink. It doesn't have to be tight. It just has to be enough so it doesn't slide off the wire. That's enough. Now, be careful to Put everything back. You see that? That bare part there will be up inside the cap. But if you want to be perfectly sure you're safe, find a little something to insulate that. Uh, I have something in the other room here. I'll be right back. It's always good to have little pieces of rubber things around. Uh, if you find an old inner tube somewhere, it wouldn't be a bad idea to hang it. See, now just lay that in there and then put the cap down. Make sure the inner tube hasn't wedged itself between the layers of the cap. And get some screws in the cap. And use washers. You don't have to use wa new washers all the time. You use new washers when you're doing engine and transmission work and universal joints and that. But on um, just caps and covers and things like that. 
You don't need to. You, the old hardware is just fine. Unfortunately, the power supply here on the workbench has gone haywire. So we'll all go out by the bus battery and test this. And I've either successfully repaired this coil or in front of all of you, I've made a fool of myself. So. Oh yeah, you, by now you probably know, if you spent one day working on your bus, you know uh, that all the nuts in the electrical systems are of two sizes, and both sizes will be everywhere. Okay, I'm going to put the camera on pause, and we're going to go back uh, out by where the battery is and see how we do with this. In case you've been wondering where... Sage has been in my videos. Well, here he is. Jason told him, get busy, do something. And here he is. You want to say hi to my bunch of people? Sure. Hey, can I, can I just say Phil is the biggest sweetheart of any of these bus YouTubers that I know. Well, I wasn't looking for that compliment, but I'm certainly not too shy to accept it with all the humility I can muster up. <laughs> we're going to go back on pause. I got the, going to set the camera up by the battery. We're going to see if that solenoid works now. Okay, now we're over by the bus battery. And here's the solenoid. I put it back together now. And so here's the test. It doesn't matter which way the polarity is for the purpose of energizing this solenoid. Since it's a DC magnet, it, it'll pull in. So here we go. Look at that, folks. We did. So there you are. A little bit of tinkering around, a little bit of this, and a little bit of that. And you've saved all your vacation money so you don't have to buy a solenoid. You can fix the one you have. That's the H on what the reverse one is. These reverse solenoids are running $550. You want to run that by me again, Sage? So I've been looking at uh, getting a new reverse solenoid for $550. Is that right? Oh, the reverse solenoid. But this this is just that emergency stop solenoid. The, the blower shutdown? The, the little one. Yeah. Those are, are a little cheaper, but uh, they don't make the reverse solenoids anymore. And uh, the ones that are left are uh, pure gold. Okay, then I guess we're going to be learning how to solder those, aren't we? Yes. Because probably most of them have the same defect. It's not the coil opening up, it's people twisting the connections off. Actually, the problem that I've been told is that the coils burn up because they're not adjusted properly, so they don't open all the way, and the coil stays on, uh, and it eventually burns up. So those two coils in the back of the reverse solenoid are what causes those to fail, and they're hard to find. Oh, okay. All right, well, that's good to know. Yeah. Okay, that'll do it for now. Well, everybody, it's the end of the day. We're sitting here feeding our face on chicken and french fries and coleslaw. That's Jason to my right. Behind him is Sage, and behind me is none other than Stan Holter. And we're at Stan Holter's empire here. Uh, we're just west of the throne in the dining hall. And so we've been working all day on Jay's silver sides, and we're getting quite a bit done. What, what have you been doing, Jay? Brakes, hubs, bearings. Get yourself in the picture and talk to the camera. <laughs> I know what you've been doing. They don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, we converted one front hub from a silver side hub to an MCI hub because it's got an early style seal on the one with the slinger and you can't get them anymore and it was all torn up. So uh, we managed to find a hub off a tag axle and we got the information from Luke at US Coach and converted it over. So now I don't have to 
have to worry about getting seals for that again. But uh, we did that. We checked all the brakes, found some broken brake springs, changed the bleed valves in the air tanks. Um, that's mostly what I did today. What'd you do? Uh, they're pretty good. Well, I managed to get the horn working, and then I managed to get it working the second time when it started honking by itself. <laughs> that horn, that's horny. Yeah, yeah. Phil was well, horny today. <laughs> Phil was right out and horny Phil. Yeah, that's all we heard today was horny Phil. <laughs> Those were the days. Then, then, let me see. Oh, yeah, and then the turn signal. There was a glitch in the turn signals. I didn't know it last night when I finished the work on that because I was facing forward and I didn't realize that a string of dome lights was blinking along with the turn signals, which explains why the Flasher was so hot I could barely touch it. Is that what I smelled burning? Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> you found a gas. I didn't know you smelled anything burning. I thought you would have panicked if you smelled something burning. Uh, it's your bus. I thought you were just melting something with the soldering iron. Oh, no. It could have been the hair on Phil's legs because I shaved him. Yeah. No, I just shaved him. It wasn't that. <laughs> well, anyway, so. Then... This morning, <laughs> well, you think that's pretty, this goes on all, this goes on all day long, you know. Stan, Stan gets up every day and comes down here to see if I've shaved my legs. So anyway, then uh, I found that wiring glitch. Here's what happens, guys. It's easy to happen, but when you take wires off of terminals, especially if you take two or three off in a row. It's so easy to get a wire back on the wrong terminal. It's just so easy because sometimes the wire is flexible enough that it looks like it came off of one terminal when it actually came off another. And I find a lot of that. So anyway, so that took care of that. Then so Phil what was horny and nutty today. Yeah, what was that? You were horny and nutty. Oh, or we're back to that again, folks. <laughs> He's from Canada. He doesn't know how we talk down here. So anyway, where did that? So what have you been up to back there, feeding your face there? We love this coleslaw. It's a great coleslaw from Popeye's Chicken in the Twin Cities. Yeah, I she didn't like it. <laughs> well, I, let's see, I worked on the windows. I've uh, been working on sourcing some of the parts. We had to have some machining work done and we had to do some other things. So I've been kind of running around getting, supporting Jason, getting this hub converted <clears throat> over to, from the uh, MCI. Yeah, and, where's, uh, where's my belts anyway? <laughs> oh, they'll be here tomorrow morning. Okay. But yeah, some of these parts are really super easy to get. Some of them are impossible and you just have to go get them made. So that's, I've been spending some time around this area doing that. Did they send my belts, Kansas City? Topeka. Topeka. Huh. Yeah, yeah they, they, went to he, they were supposed to come to Bloomington? Yeah, this that, morning for 8 o'clock. Bloomington, Minnesota, and they ended up in Topeka, Kansas. Well, mm -hmm. there you are. See? That's O'Reilly's for you. O'Reilly's? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, well, then what else, Sage? That's about it. it? <clears throat> That's all I've really been working on with this. I mean, there's other things I, I uh, helped him with his seats, and I mean, there's a number of other things that I've been working on the project, but. Plus you got the win some of those windows fixed tonight. <clears throat> yeah, I fixed the windows. And you've been a great help running around getting, picking up stuff. Changed the oil. He, got, he got dirty, he changed the oil last night. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. oh too. yeah, he yeah. changed the oil and filters last night. Okay, and then what about you, Stan? What were you doing besides watching? He was finding parts. I'm the sorcerer. <laughs> the sorcerer. <laughs> I've been multitasking this. Usually running around back and forth doing <laughs> working on selling parts and selling buses. Well, he's done a good job. I'll tell you what, I gotta tell you folks, I just I probably am one of the luckiest guys in the world having a place like this to exercise my trade, working for all the years I have for Stan, 
and having a bus facility to work on buses. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine a real garage with a roof and walls and windows that close and doors that close and a concrete floor and shelves of parts and near part suppliers? This is a great life, guys. Eat your heart out. But remember, bus old Phil would not trade this for anything in the world, including fine young women and lots of money. Oh, wait a minute now. I, <coughs> I don't need the money. So anyway, so that's about it. I hope you enjoy these video clips. Don't forget comments and comment on the comments and subscribe. Click the little bell so that when one of us puts on one of these song and dances, It'll alert you. It'll wake up the dogs. And so uh, Jason has a spot. Tell him about your channel. Well, we just started a channel documenting what we're doing to this bus, well, fixing it up and getting it home. Uh, <clears throat> and once I get it home, we're going to keep working on restoring it. So I'm going to document that whole process. And once the bus is ready to travel, then we'll document some of our travels. And we're planning to travel across both Canada and the U.S. with it and hopefully do some long miles with it. Okay, Jason, thank you. Uh, 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 Sage, yeah. tell them about your channel. Well, <clears throat> yeah, I, so uh, I think if you, if you want to either Google Texas Bus Rescue or YouTube Texas Bus Rescue. I think I'm going right now, I'm going with Silverside Sage uh, is the name of the channel right now. And uh, so I've got a couple of different buses. I've got a <clears throat> pre-war uh, yellow coach Silversides, which is a 4101 <clears throat> that we uh, rescued last year in October. And I've got a bunch of video footage. I'm gonna probably re-edit that and put those videos out a little bit better than they did last year. And then we just finished up, Jason and I have been traveling together for uh, 35 days straight, uh, rescuing my bus and now getting his bus going. And uh, so that is a bus we got out of Texas, a 3751. And so Silverside Sage, I think if you, if you look for that, you'll be able to find, you'll be able to find uh, me on YouTube. And what are you up to, Stan? <laughs> Trying to find parts for people and trying to sell buses. <laughs> well, you do a good job of parts, and uh, if you're looking for a pre-war, had a had a, a buyer for it, but he got wiped out by a hurricane, so now he can't take it. And somebody asked me if you sell buses, and I referred them to you. Have you heard anything from anybody? No. Through a Bus Boys Collection is where I'm sending them. Is that a good way? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I'd only listed that one pre-war that, that uh, Well, what would be for PD, sale right now? PD, well, we're, PDG 3701. Okay. Um, Anything else right now for sale? Anything's for sale for the right money. Okay. <laughs> you, you, you heard that, folks. You so, can do by uh, Phil. Uh, <laughs> cash in your life insurance. Uh, they don't have enough money. <laughs> Pull your kids out of college and tell them to get a oh, job. Here, so <laughs> Stan will have the bus you want man. ready for you when you're ready. <laughs> and we'll get it ready for you if you want to shop in here before you get it. Uh, that would be a good idea. And by the way, next week I'm going to be doing a show from CNJ Bus Repair. CNJ is going to be doing repair work on older MCIs and maybe even newer GMs. So stand by for that. We are finally going to have a place for you to bring your bus that you can trust the people. It ain't going to be cheap, but enough of you already know what it's cost you not finding the right place. So we will have a place for you to bring your bus for repair very soon. Thanks for watching. God bless you all.